Hello. Um, so my name is Armin Berg. I'm working at the Joint Research Center, which is part of the European Commission. And I will present, it's already a year ago in the last conference uh, workshop of that type, we started to present something of the simulated type. Now we went a bit ahead with a web-based uh, um, interactive processing of Earth observation data. It's a bit special, not maybe 100% fitting in herein, but at the end you will see how it fits a bit more into data sharing in general. So the background of that is Earth observation data is very widely used at JRSD. So for various types of analysis like deforestation monitoring or agriculture, uh, crop yield forecast or identification of uh, human settlements. Uh, quite a, for a lot of projects they're using it. And something that uh, changed quite a lot the way how to do work with the data is the Copernicus program that is financed by EU with a fleet of satellites. Currently there are four, there will be six, which are producing masses of data that are free and open. So more data than usually was happening in this domain of Earth observation. So in order to deal with them and to, an to store and analyze them, you needed some new approaches also at GRC. We had to start now some more different approaches, more centralized than it was before. Um, so we set up what's called GRC Earth Observation Data Processing Platform. It's focusing then on satellite image data, mainly from this uh, Copernicus program and, uh, data and satellites, but also other Landsat and various types of data sets. Um, we had to support for the various processing uh, workflows of the already existing projects. And one of the major work also in, that in our new project was to set up a, a generic API for processing Earth observation data, which is in Python, and but based on C++ modules. And so I will show then a bit more of the interactive processing. Um, so these are components of our infrastructure. So one of the core parts you see on top right, that's the distributed file system, the storage part. This is EOS, so we use the system uh, developed and maintained by CERN, and we were glad that they gave us a lot of support to set it up. We have some computation clients, and then these two type, major types of the processing. Just very quickly, the low-level batch processing is a more of a classical uh, processing approach where you, you have a workload manager and you spread your load over all nodes of your cluster. What we're using maybe specifically here in our environment is to have Docker containers with, because we have a lot of different uh, projects that have their own tool, their own libraries that they need and with that it was very easy to handle that in that infrastructure. And the whole system scales relatively well, and also the throughput from the storage is working well. A bit a newer, we could say also more innovative approach is the more interactive processing. So using the web interface uh, um, for accessing and processing the data. It's already, uh, Enric already showed quite a lot of this Jupyter notebook, so you already got quite a lot of information about that. We're using the similar technology, Jupyter notebooks running inside Docker containers. And maybe a bit special in our case that since we are dealing with imagery data and let's say geographical data, also the typical way after to see the results if you put all, all of that onto a map and that's all. It's an interactive map inside Jupyter. And we have a first prototype running. And also for us, what we, uh, one of the major parts in the future to uh, do still is the interact interaction with the workload manager and also this current processing library we have to fully integrate into this processing system. That's a bit how, just a very small screenshot, how it looks like. So you have the Jupyter notebook and you have a map, an interactive map. And here uh, just to, uh, as an example, to uh, satellite imagery that are shown over it. The way how it works, so here again you have your Jupyter notebook that is served through a certain one, for example, one server currently. You have your Jupyter notebook, you have your code, every, all of our the programming environment for all of that. We will use Jup uh, we will use Python and with an underlying that's also here based on uh, C, li C++ libraries. A bit different to maybe standard notebooks is that the processing itself is not running on that server in that notebook directly. 
it's more a kind of, we call it also deferred processing. Practically you create, you program here, you search for data. And um, just when you then say add this processing, this as a new layer to the map, then the processing starts. And it happens in a way that practically your processing is collected as a processing chain, encoded into JSON and stored in a database and directly also this layer through a combination, through a communication from Python in your code to the JavaScript mapping library that is behind this uh, interactive map. We add a layer to it and that layer has as an identification a hash value from your processing chain and from that on it starts to spread the request over to uh, send the request uh, to this our web gateway for that. So you get for example this processing is run in small tiles. You see the map is split in smaller tiles. And for all tile, you get a separate process running. So you have already a bit of parallel uh, requests there. It goes there. Um, this spreads the load over the processing service behind. They get practically also through this hash value in the URL of the processing. They look into the database, what they have to do, which data they have to read and to process and it returns for all of this as a small tile, a PNG or JPEG into the browser of the client. And if all the time you zoom in and zoom out, it's doing that whole thing again multiple times. I will just quickly show then, um, well, how is that full screen? Uh, that's how it looks like. This is, let's just close the map again. So first you add a map. At the beginning you add a map to your, to your notebook. There is the standard map you can zoom in and zoom out. I mean like you have Google Maps and these kind of things as a similar way. The next step is here, in that, in the next cell, um, I'm looking for a certain image collection. This is called S2, it means Sentinel-2, it's a certain type of satellite. And I want to look for area, for image data over the area of Amsterdam. And for a certain year, you see then the filter on the date, so it's more late summer last year. And then uh, you make a bit of a combination of the bands of this satellite imagery, and then you add that. Uh, to the map, now I just go back to the map, and you see then this is added to the map, and it works practically that all the time, if I zoom in now, it makes a new request uh, to, our pro to the processing servers and sending back uh, sending back then these image tiles. Without mouse is a bit So this is one part of the way how you can deal with that. So this, and you can zoom in, zoom out, and I also as I said, every time you zoom in and zoom out, it gets new requests, and, this and practically also this image is already uh, a processed image. It has to read data, it has to interpret it, it has to do some things like histogram stretching. What I want to show, in addition, a classical in, uh, in, um, analysis, for example, to see where there's green vegetation. And for that you have uh, different types of vegetation indexes. So you have band combinations and this I can add on top of that. So you have here, um, you specify a certain color you want to have that and here is also practically where it's most likely no vegetation is that transparent. If I add that, it will also add if I run this cell, it will also add then a new layer to that map. Oops. It's a bit difficult to navigate with this. So here you see this is uh, then the map and also here you have then the analysis of uh, everything that is green is uh, is, veg is green vegetation in late summer. 
And now to do exactly the same, you have a, can have a combination or a comparison towards what is the date you have now making the same kind of request, just a different date. So this is then uh, late uh, or it's winter time from last year to beginning of this year. And I launch that in addition. Then you see that first it adds the image to the map and then it makes uh, the vegetation index of that to the map. Also here you can always zoom in and zoom out. And you get all these things is then always done and calculated on the fly and sent to the client. Just one, can also swap the images. So here you see now the difference between, not, this is now summer, this is winter time. You can zoom in and zoom out. This is a bit of a nightmare with this one here. <laughs> So, okay, that's just, whoops. Can anybody just help me where I can find back the document? I've never used. I don't know. No problem. Macintosh. Uh, I think it should be here. Okay. Control F now. Yes, no, I'm going back full screen. There we go. Okay. Okay. Also, uh, Enrique already mentioned then you can share these notebooks with others. So, this is a way of instead of having processing data and sharing the data directly, you can also just share this notebook. So, you give it, you, sa you save it, give the file to somebody, and he can she can uh, run exactly the same thing, see exactly the same analysis of the data or the modi to some modification. Also what we already started to, Im or we have implemented, not used too much, but it can be handy if you have relatively uh, processing that takes longer time. You could also, let's say, enable some caching mechanism so that all these small tiles that, are, that they already created before, uh, so that they're saved and because it's that helps then speeding up the whole display of that. Another way of uh, sharing data of this type, here you see um, is using standardized web applications or web services. There are protocols like what's called web map service or WMS, which is a standardized protocol to share geodata. You can load them here uh, in a web, in a desktop application, which supports this kind of service. Here what you see as a result, as uh, displayed here that was run on our infrastructure end of last year to identify on a global scale all human settlements. A similar, uh, the similar type of thing you see here that's indirectly the same service loaded into a web application. And just in the last slide, we also started now practically to bring to use things like Nextcloud or OnCloud in together with our infrastructure, we set up a Nextcloud instance where we can store the no user can store their notebooks or share uh, Python note, uh, modules with others or share data. And with a bit of an overlap with that is also to have uh, web-based terminal services like a remote desktop access where because people still might want to have for some data quick analysis or visualization tools, desktop tools, so like MATLAB, NV, this is typically for uh, image data processing. And to have that, and what you see here, you just have a web browser and you have access to uh, Linux workstation through that. And also there we use Nextcloud to share the home directory of users inside these uh, instances with the Nextcloud instance there. So you have all the data that you have in one system, you have also in the other then. Okay, that was it, thanks. Thank you very much. So, questions? Yeah. 
we downloaded all the data. I mean, the data that, uh, that we have here are data we downloaded from ESA, pre-processed them. Yeah, I'm infrastructure, yeah. More questions? <coughs> well, if not, uh, well, Armin, thank you very much. <laughs>